survival comedy, comedy survival evolved. My name's Brett. This is a show where we talk about impossible things and how to survive them sometimes. And sometimes we do things like we play games. And even more sometimes than that. Uh, last season we did a show where... An impromptu show where Mom read a comic book to you, the reader, dear listener. And it was so hilarious that I thought it would be fun to do that again. And much to my mom's chagrin, uh, I've trapped her in a room in her own house with a comic book that I'm going to thrust into her arms. And she's going to go about reading it to you and describing the panels therein. Uh, I've picked something that I know my mom knows nothing about whatsoever. Um, and, but first off, before we get to that, uh, Mom, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, son. Hi, Mom. What I'm you... excited to be here as always. Yes, you haven't been here in a while. What have you been up to? Um, nothing, because of the virus. I've been up to, um, nothing. And then I've been down to nothing, and then across the way to nothing. Just nothing. Okay, great. Mom's up to nothing. She's about to read us a story, and Mom, you can read, right? I can read, and I'm going to read for everyone because I know, um, you know, if you're driving and you can't open a book, then I'm going to read you a story. If you're ready to fall asleep, you can listen to a story I'm going to tell you. Consider this a uh, test, Mom. You want to do this for, like, a full show of you just narrating stories? like Kind of uh, like kind of like lowbrow LeVar Burton, only instead of reading things that make you cry, you, make, you read things that make no sense? Well, no, I don't think I can talk that long. We'll see. We'll 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 not. And my attention out. span isn't that long, so. Well, not well, mom. You you did sign a contract for the show, and if the show ends, you are obligated to provide me at least uh, two more seasons worth of content. How about I read you a bedtime story? That's basically what this is. No, when you're falling asleep. That makes no like sense. Like when you were a little baby. But we're recording it. No. Oh, you just want to do yes. it? Yes. Oh, you just okay. No, we're not oh, doing that. Man. Okay, uh, the, the story that I have selected for you today, Mother, is called Lockjaw and the Pet Avengers, written by Chris Eliopoulos, artist Ig Guara, with Colleen Cover, issue number one, Frog Thor original, colorist Chris Sotomayor, letterer Blambots Nate Picos, cover artist Carl Kershaw and Romain Gachette, consulting editor Ralph Mac Macchio, and edited by Nathan Cosby. Holy cow, there was a lot of names in there that uh, I, I, I couldn't pronounce. Uh, so mom, here's the first page of Lockdown and the Pet Avengers. The show is now yours. Lockjaw and the Pet Avengers. Lock, Lockjaw, that's what I meant Everybody, to Everybody gather around, turn up the volume. I'm getting ready to tell you an amazing story about heroes and villains and love. <laughs> you don't even know what it's about. Crap like that. So, let's start with the Infinity Gems. Oh my goodness, I need my glasses. I cannot see this. <laughs> That's a pretty... <laughs> let, let me read you. Settle in to the dulcet tones of... Mom rustling about as she attempts to find glasses so that she can see the page of the thing that she knew she was going to read, but she didn't know what it was exactly. So Mom? everybody knows what the Infinity Gems are, and if you don't, you've been in, under a rock. That is um, where, what's his face? Uh, Thanos. Thanos collect all these rocks from all these movies, and he put it in a little cute gold glove, and he said, I'm going to kill everyone. Oh, half of everyone. Uh, half of everyone, because the world needs to be populated, with, uh, and people need to be killed, and blah, 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 blah. So that's what the Infinity Gems is. So, I'm going to break it down for you. The Mind Gem boosts mental power and permits access to all thoughts. The space gem exists in any location. The reality gem, where all dreams can be fulfilled. The time gem, where you can have control over then and now. Huh. And the soul gem, which allows the users to steal, manipulate, or alter souls, living or dead. And the power gem contains all energy that has or will exist. Hey, Brett, which gem would you want? Um, ooh, that's a good question. Probably, oh man, that's a tough one. Probably the reality gem. 
I would go reality because then I can just make reality whatever I want. Yeah, the mind gem seems pretty cool. Boost mental power. I'm getting old. I'm I can change things. The, technically, the reality gem. I mean, what is reality if you can't change the minds and hearts of all those around you? Yeah, but it doesn't boost your mental power anyway. Why wouldn't it? If that was your reality you wanted to create. So we all know that right. all the gems are connected, son. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of have like a beacon that kind of hones into each other. If you so, say so. Uh, the stones have been dispersed through space. They were once united and mounted on a, they call it a gauntlet, I call it a glove. And Thanos nearly destroyed the universe. And we can't let that happen again. And that's why I've come to you. So this is the Fantastic Four, and um, Elastic Man says, <laughs> <laughs> "Okay." Um, Reed Richards. Reed Richards, Elastic Man. Nope. Reed Just, Richards. That's amazing, Mom. Because hold on, uh, Rubber Band Man. Nope. Uh, Elastic Man, Elastic Man, or whatever is is a DC character. So that's that's funny that you say that because he's basically like the DC version of Reed Richards. Okay. Well, he says, we must find the gems and keep them separate. Duh. And then uh, Medusa says, but why? Why do you ask for our help? And he says, I'm certain that one of the gem is here. On the moon. Dun, dun, dun! Does it say that or are you just adding stuff? No, it says on the moon. It says dun, dun, dun? Yes. Okay. Specifically here in the blue area of the moon, the only region with an atmosphere. And I need strong-minded individuals who can withstand the effects of the gems. Medusa is, says... Is this still Mr. Fantastic talking? Yes. Okay. Will you quit interrupting me? I'm sorry. Am I not, am I not describing this enough? Okay. Medusa says, my husband and I share your concern, and we're committed to aiding you. Who's Medusa. She's a girl with long hair and a very tight skin outfit and <laughs> very hot looking. And um, Reed Richards says, she, I'm glad to... She's the queen of the Inhumans and, and she can control her own hair. And she's queen of the Inhumans and she can control her own hair, Brett. Yeah. So then Mr. Richard says, I'm glad to hear that. I can't imagine someone with weak willpower discovering one of the gems. They could corrupt and influence anybody. So we move on down to a cut scene and we see a little cute little puppo, puppy dog, okay. and he says, Woof! What kind? And he, um, he looks like he has a tuning fork stuck out of his forehead. But he looks like a, um, a cute little English bulldog, except he's really huge, really big. He's kind of tan in color and he looks adorable and he's walking around the people that's like on a on a walkway and he's sniffing around and then he goes down to a little park full of dirt and he starts digging and I bet you guys know what he finds right um he finds a bone he finds the infinity stone does he are you sure about that yep okay and he digs it up and he puts it in in his mouth and the infinity stone shoots a light of thunder into his Right eyeball. Don't ask me why I didn't draw this or write the story. Cut back to cut back to Hi, Dad. Medusa and Richard hey, and her husband. <laughs> oh, her husband has a mask with the tuning fork on his head. So it must be his tuning fork dog. <laughs> and Richard says, We should begin a search on the outlining areas and Medusa interrupts and says, says, because that's rude. How will we know if we find the gem? And Richard says, there is no mistaking the power of the... And here comes the tuning fork, cute dog, and he jumps on Richard's and kisses him. And slobbers all over him. Whoa, uh, Richard uh, says. Mom, her husband is Black Bolt. He's the king of the Inhumans, but however, he cannot speak. Uh, if he speaks, his voice is capable of leveling an entire city. That's why he's mute. And that's why she speaks for him. Oh... Uh. I thought it was just a wife's job to talk over her husband all the time. Anyway. And yes, that's their dog. Oh, we find out the name of the dog. The dog's name is Lockjaw. So Medusa yells, Lockjaw, what has gone into you? Get down. My apologies, Reed. Reed says, not a problem, Medusa. Typical dog behavior. Woof. Be gone.
on, Lockjaw. Teleport away. Ugh, says Lockjaw. Uh, for but some some backstory that they did not establish here, uh, Lockjaw is an inhuman dog. Uh, capable mom inhumans are like mutant are like mutants in the marvel universe oh, okay but they're different they're not mutants they're like separate they were turned that way because of the terrigen mist uh but anyway uh lockjaw has the power to teleport anywhere oh okay well i didn't know all that stuff he's just you're welcome he's just a dog and he's like all grumpy because his owner mean old woman told him to teleport somewhere and all he wants to do is be around the people he loves and so, in, we cut, a, cut back to, we cut to Central Park, New York City, and a small creature is patrolling the undergrowth, keeping an ever-vigil watch until Lockjaw, vroom, he teleports there. And he stands in front of this ever-small creature who is ever vigilant about watching Central Park. And he shows up and he teleports Right in front of this frog-looking dude. And the frog says, Who goes there? <laughs> and if thy attempt be harm my frog clan, prepare to taste mine hammer. Mom. Please, how big is that? Oh, the, oh, the frog is dressed up like Thor. Mom, that's that, so cute. That's Throg. Oh, that's dumb. <laughs> you should talk to You should say his voice like he's Kermit. Uh, and Throg says... I will defend them to my dying. And of course, uh, woof. Who art thee, dog? And what be this? I should pick this up. I guess the dog dropped the infinity stone in front of him. And Throg, uh, Throg. <laughs> oh my god. Throg picks it up. And his eyes also turn glassy like the infinity stone possessed him. And he goes, Argh. Uh, Mom, if I may, Throg is Simon Walterson, who was a college football star at Mississippi State University, who eventually was drafted into the professional ranks. However, a severe knee injury ended his football career. There's a phone! Uh, he found a new reason for life with charity work and blah, 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 and eventually a witch turned him into a frog, uh, and then blah, 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 Scardy and stuff. He became worthy. Now he's Throg. Okay, so that doesn't matter to me because he's a little talking frog and I don't know what kind of powers he could have. But you know, he's talking to the dog and the dog can't talk back to him. I don't know why he's talking to him. But he says, uh, yeah, uh, what happened? And he talks in like old time he will talk. How does this happen? The gem enables mind reading? How does thee know I was safe to? Oh, you read my mind when you held it, of course. So apparently he can read um, Lockjaw and Throg the Frog can read each other's mind. And it looks like um, Throg is telling um, Lockjaw that he used to be a football player. Thank you, Brad. I could yeah. have told that story. Sorry. He, he got injured and mar he got married. Um, they helped the homeless people. And... Um, he gave up on life and blah. <laughs> I, I like I like your ver, your abridged version. And of he this went stuff. to a fortune teller, and she told him uh, something he knew not that there had been another life in his wife's belly. Oh, woohoo! Why his heart shattered into a million pieces. The fortune teller demanded her payment. I'm sorry, honey. I need my five hundred bucks. I'm sorry, your wife's pregnant with another man's child. God. And then she cursed him. For what reason? I have no idea. Oh, but his money had run out. So she cursed him and turned him into a frog. And then he learned... Um, a frog named Puddle Gulp. <laughs> so he just hanged out at Central Park. And he couldn't talk to the other frogs because they were just regular frogs. And uh, he used to fight rats. And, you know, you know how it is, the life of a frog in Central Park. And... Um, you know, he's just hanging out. Well, uh, suddenly, you know, he's hanging out and he finds this little th hammer that looks like a baby little Thor hammer. And, um, he picked it up and he turned into, um, Throg. Throg. 
So there you go. Now he has uh, Thor powers because he picked up the baby little Thor thing. So all this time he's telling the dog this in his brain. They're ESP each other. They're they're not even basically talking except the frog is, and the dog's just looking at him like he's a freaking weirdo. Um, but then the frog says, and the dog says, "Well, let's come on, let's go somewhere." And that scene cut. Hello. Doing a podcast. It's these solicitors, man. They just don't ever quit. So, um, next scene is, of course, Xavier's School for the Gifted Youngsters. And, um, believe it or not, kids, there's a purple dinosaur in there. And a little purple dinosaur dragon. And he says, <laughs> there's, no, there's no other hero we need more than the mighty warrior... <clears throat> Excuse me, and he's talking to the little frog. And the frog says, My name's Mighty Lockheed, and uh, I have fought for many battles alongside friends and comrades, is what the purple dinosaur um, dragon says. I fought for a lot of people. I have caused death and loneliness. I have lost everyone on my planet. And the one person on earth I call friend is gone. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Everybody has troubles. Uh, so he's talking to the... Lockheed is an alien from another world. Um, he's typically associated with Shadowcat of the X-Men. Well, the dragon continues to cry and whine, and I'm not understanding why they even went to the school, but um, they all are three walking, I guess in Brooklyn, New York now, and they find a bird that can talk. And uh, he says he works with a noble human named Falcon. Uh, Mom, they're not exactly talking. It's kind of like um, mind reading. Homeward Bound, where the animals could talk to each other but not communicate with people that way. So uh, that's kind of what's happening. Okay. So they're talking to this um, Falcon, and they call him Red Wing. Surprise. Yeah. Uh, um, in the movies, Falcon didn't have a pet Falcon, but uh, in the comics, he does. I must have missed what was going on because I'm only on like the fourth page and uh, they're all they're all ganged <laughs> together and, right. the, and the and First the bird all, says I will help you this one time. What are you guys doing? They're trying to keep the stone away from Thanos. Well, I didn't read any of that. That was the whole thing with Thanos at the beginning, and then yeah, Lockjaw with the humans, not and with the Lockjaw, Lockjaw finds the stone. But he didn't tell the... Anyway. Well, he tried to tell the Inhumans, and they're like, Be gone, Beast. And he said, Okay. All right, cut to Queens, New York. Okay. Dogs are barking. This cute little... Looks like um, a shaggy dog with a ribbon. It's a Shih Tzu. That is not a Shih Tzu. I'm pretty sure it's a Shih Tzu. It's not a Shih Tzu. We'll find out. Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a white dog. It's a girl because she has ribbons in her ears. It could be a guy dog. Guys like ribbons in their ears, too. Who knows? But he's chasing the cat, and the cat can even talk. Says The cat says, I said, leave me alone. And the dog said, that was totally awesome. Let's do it again, do it again, do it again. And the cat says, go away, chase a car. I don't care, you just leave me alone. And the little cute Shih Tzu says, but I was having fun. You don't want to play? And the cat, of course, says, not if you were the last dog on earth. Well, around the corner, here comes Lockjaw, the froggy... The falcon bird and the dragon. Purple dragon. Wow. Not retaining any names there, huh? Art thou the feline known as Nails? And she said it. Hairbond. Excuse me? I used to be called Nails, the cat said. But if my master can himself can himself speedball after our accident, I can be Hairball. And Throg says, very well, Hairball. We are on a quest for gems uh. that contain immense power. And we need heroes to safeguard them. Uh huh. And, and Hairball says, Well, if I help you, I get to eat the bird. No, no, no. The frog says, Nobody eats the bird. And the cute little. So, Hairball is um, Cannonball's pet cat who, in the same like experiment or whatever that gave him his powers, the cat was also trapped in it. And that's why he has those little floaty orbs. Um, around him and he can basically fly at high speeds and ricochet off things like a cannonball oh that's cool yeah he's really cool but he doesn't get to eat the bird so um 
So the cat decides to go with him. And then the dog that was playing with her, that little cute little dog's name's Miss Lion, and she belonged to Spider-Man. And she uh, just wanted... Actually, well, her master's nephew was Spider-Man. Right, so. there you go. And she thinks she's a May, hero. Aunt May. And she's so cute. And Wait she wants to go along, and they're like... Wait for it. You don't have no powers. You don't have to go. And she said, oh, I want to go. And so they said, okay. So now you got... Uh, also, I don't know if they're about to say it or not, but Miss Lion is actually a boy. Well, I said boys could wear ribbons in there. You ears. did, and that's what I, I wanted. I didn't want to spoil it because I thought they might say it in the comic, but uh, Miss Lion's actually a boy that just wears pretty ribbons and stuff in his Aunt May's little old lady dog. Okay, so now you got the purple dragon. Lockheed. You've got the dog with the tuning fork in his hand. Lockjaw. You've got the frog who thinks he's Thor. Throg. You've got the falcon, red falcon. Red wing. You've got the kitty cat that can bounce off of things. Hairball. With balls all over him. And you've got the cute little white Shitsu. puppy. Miss Lion. So now they're trying to come up with a plan because they're talking six pages about joining each <laughs> other. God dang it. <laughs> Shut the hell up and let's go. All right, that scene's you done. You can just abridge it if you want, Mom. This is your show. All right, get, so now... Get creative with it. We're, like, the tuning... Lockjaw teleports everybody to a prehistoric area that is hidden in Antarctica, and there's dinosaurs and pterodactyls and just lush forests, and this is all in Alaska, kids. You know, don't believe them scientists that tell you it's all covered in ice and stuff. There what are you is talking about? a secret land that is prehistoric in Alaska. Oh, okay. So Lockjaw and... transports them all over there. And they're just blabbing away, having a good time, and talking to each other, and sniffing each other's butts. And all of a sudden, oh my god! Jesus. Here comes the T Rex. Roar! Oh my god. And they all run away scared. Roar! And at that same instance, while they're running, here comes, oh my god, a saber tooth tiger from the other direction. And they're like caught in the middle. And the T Rex and the saber tooth tiger, oh, they're not mean. They just don't like strangers. So the saber tooth tiger says, Get back, creature. You shall taste my blood. It fail to heed me, and you will see your own spilled. And there's that weird speak again. Who talks like that? And then the He's saber tooth. He's from the savage lands. Saber tooth says, Fear not, strangers. That beast will trouble you no longer. Talking about the T Rex. She was merely a mother defending her eggs. And cute little white puppy says, wow, you're so awesome. I wish I could be just like you. And, of course, the hairball cat says, you're a dog. There's no way you could be as cool as a cat. Oh, my gosh. Why do they got to hate so much? Can't they all just get along? So anyway, it's, it's funny because um, Miss Lion, of all the pet Avengers that all have powers or something extraordinary about them. Miss Lion's dog. Miss Lion is literally just a regular dog. So She's not regular. She can speak, so that's good. I, okay. Well, anyway, you know, um, they thank the kitty cat, Saber Top, Saber Tooth. Oh, he's got a name called Zabu. Yep, Zabu. He loyal, is... loyal beast of Kazar. Yeah, he's the companion of Kazar in the Savage Lands. So basically, they're just simple creatures on a monumental quest. So you've got all these... Cute animals you can cuddle with at night and love on them and hug them. And they got superpowers and they're going to go on this quest to find these gems. So, okay, so um, they go back to a little backstory telling how Lockjaw found the, the gem and they have to keep it away from Thanos and more talking and more captioning. And, of course, um, the saber tooth Xano says... Well, you know, I'd like to go and hang out. You know, you guys look pretty cool. Let's all go together. I mean, more merrier, more the stronger. You know, we all get along. And, of course, the little cute white puppy says, Sure, let's go together. Yay, we have you on the team. I mean, if it's okay with the rest of you and everybody agrees, except they put that in two pages that they agree for the saber tooth to come with them. So they're just basically, again, yapping and talking. And 
Ah! Out of the bushes come a red Tyrannosaurus Rex. Run! Run, run, run. Excuse me, thank you for acknowledging my perfectly timed sound effects. But anyway, so then Zabu, the saber-toothed little cute kitten, says, Oh, excuse me, sir, we're so sorry to interrupt you, but you know, you're an odd-colored uh, Tyrannosaur. Why are you red? I mean, it's rude of me to ask, but I also want to apologize for disturbing you. And of course, you know, even though they can talk, <laughs> this T-Rex cannot talk. He just goes, oh, My gosh. It's, uh Devil Dinosaur, Mother. <laughs> the Devil Dinosaur. But That's he, his name. He is a actual Marvel hero. He's a hero? He's a hero. What can he do with his little arms? Uh, he's actually, he's a special T-Rex, and he's usually the, a companion of Moon Boy or Moon Girl. Hey, on the iteration. and he joins them in the group. Yeah, as like, sort of like a temporary member while they're in the Now they're a herd. <laughs> and they're still walking and talking. Oh, they're talking about Devil Dinosaur. So, um, they all become great friends. <laughs> I love how you just, like, there's like a thousand text bubbles, and you're, you're just surmising everything. Well, that's everything. because um, they're just talking about each other, and they're talking about what they had for lunch, and who they play with, and who their friends are. And really, they're just trying to tell them who their masters are, and whose master's better. But, you know, um, I guess there's competition world in the animal world also. And so now they're still walking, and um, the purple dragon, he gets mad at the red devil dinosaur and shoots some fire in his face, and uh, the, di the red dinosaur, he gets mad, and um, he gets mad, and he's trying to eat the bird, and then everything goes on, and then, then um, the frog, he wants to jump in. I think they're just wrestling. And then... So they're all just playing around, burning there, each other. Is cutting. that what's happening? Yeah, they're 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 burning each other and pecking each other's eyes and clawing at each other. I can't and... believe you just glossed past. Oh like, wait the a most minute! Faint... It says assemble. Yeah, he's, so because Throg is calling the pet Avengers to assemble. Oh, like, so like the Avenger, like Captain America would say, that. Avengers like assemble. Why doesn't he just say that? Oh boy! All right, so um. Oh, the devil dinosaur is fighting them all. Yeah. Well, that's not nice. Oh, the devil dinosaur had the gem, and they all wanted the gem back. So they got the gem back. Um, and so they all start running from devil dinosaur because they've got the gem. That's why they were fighting. Shouldn't fight. You should just ask for it politely. Actually, wasn't it like controlling his mind or something? And that's why he was being mean? Is that why he can't talk? I'm pretty sure that's he was just being. Be, I don't see that. I don't think he can talk, but I'm pretty sure he I'm was sorry, just being. Sorry, did you want to read he... the comic book? Okay, I'm sorry. So they're still down there in um, Alaska, in the hidden part of. It's the not Alaska. That's what it says right here. Okay, all right, gone. No, no, no. Back page, back page, all right, back page. Don't worry, it's story. Antarctica. Oh, Antarctica. That's a totally different place than Alaska. It's still cold. <laughs> so they're still walking through there, and um, the devil dinosaur is following them everywhere. And they're, like, taking it, and they're, like, fighting. And so um, they all fly up in the air and then fall into the ocean, and they're in bubbles in the ocean. Oh, my God, what is that? And that's a good place to leave it. No way. That's a big sea monster about to eat them all. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to keep going? Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, poor devil dinosaur. He just wants to be friends with people. He's fine. Wanna, He's got friends. Don't worry about just it. Just wants to eat them. So, Mom, what did you...